I want everybody to get as much as possible from this, like in terms of like a normal training session and just have, so just do whatever you do for your normal kind of training session. Obviously, Molly, you've got a bit of a session plan for your guys uh, and, and just basically use me to add value to what you're doing rather than me leading everything, if you will. So I just want to kind of give you little tips and tri tricks with what you're already doing and optimize what you're already doing rather than, you know, it be about me kind of thing. So it's up to you, whatever order you want to do it in. Obviously, there's some of you that have got questions with the deadlift suit and stuff. So yeah, it'd be, be like maybe get going with that. But if you want to, you like say for instance, if you don't want to do one of the events, just crack on and do your own thing and I'll just dip round and help you as I can. Yeah? Yeah. 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 But also if you like, what are the other things? Like have a feel of the whole squad while you're doing it. Then. Yeah, I, th I think it'd be really good for everybody to have a go at least the five events because they, because the mat, the, there's in, in ev like you're all really good at everything. I know you haven't done much in the suit. Shannon hasn't done much with the stone run and stuff, but. But obviously you, you're already really good. So I think we're going to get the most value out of seeing you do stuff and then just tweaking, you know, like we did the other day, you know, when you're doing your stone and then I just give you a couple of things to, rather than me talk you through the basics kind of thing. If you want, if you want me to talk through the basics of the deadlift suit and stuff, that's absolutely fine. Um, I think the, the general consensus that I'm, the, the general feeling that I'm getting is you're, you're, it's feeling mega uncomfortable, isn't yeah. it? So, this is, a, this is a big thing with the deadlift suit. You, like you, Joe said to suck it up and mm. kind of get on with it, which I, I disagree with a lot. Like I, I, I find the, uh, the, the, the guys that I've coached and, and myself have had the most success out of pulling in a suit when it's been relatively comfortable and at a point what, that you can train all the time. So a, so a simple thing that, that I, I like to imagine is, is almost imagine, if you haven't done much of it before, almost like a singlet, like for powerlifting or weightlifting, but almost made out of the same material as your jeans, if you will. So it might be a little bit uncomfortable when you get it on, but it should, that, 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 when I think of best performance in the suit, it actually feels comfortable walking around and I don't need to take it off in between, yeah? But when I'm kind of cranking the straps up and getting down to my start position, and feeling that bit of support, yeah? So you, you've all heard of these people that, that say, oh, it's hurting my crotch, it's, or whatever. And, and they're, they're uncomfortable before they even get down to the yeah. bar. And then they're literally pulling themselves down to the bar, which I understand when I started learning it a few years ago, the logic was, well, the, tight, the tighter it is, the more, the more pop you're gonna get. Oh, if you can get it on, it's the right suit for you. Yeah, well, I disagree, I disagree yeah. with, Unless, like, you, you really, like, as you get more experience with it, like, for instance, me, I've done it loads and loads and loads, yeah. so I'll probably be more comfortable cranking it up more than you guys will yeah. be, yeah? And you've only got, what, five weeks yeah. to... It's so it, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. By the time I feel like I'm getting somewhere, it's too uncomfortable for me to work yeah. for any longer. Definitely. So the, this a simple little protocol that you could that you could do that I find really valuable with the suit, especially if you're feeling like oh I, I don't know how it's supposed to feel, like doing like a secondary session where I don't know if I've given some of it to you similar, but like where you're doing like say doubles and triples around say 50 percent or something, 45, 50 percent, something that you could even tag on to a different session like your overhead session, yeah. and just chuck it in at the start as a warm up or a finisher. Where, you, where you're doing 10 or 12 sets and you're just thinking, right, well, how does it feel going here? Right, next set, I'm gonna go here. Next set, I'm gonna try feet yeah. out. Oh, that feels good, I'm gonna do that again. Right, I'm gonna try and set up a little bit further away, knees over, like all these little things, these intricate little, little things can be, um, you can find that out on that session. Yeah. So then you come to your, your main session where you're hitting it, where you're going heavy or whatever, and you can commit to, the position that feels the best rather than exploring when you're building up to yeah. a top set 
and it feels feels crap and yeah. then you, you you might have even thought oh well, like I'll just pull better raw yeah. yeah and so many people thought like go 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 into that bracket just because they've got had a poor experience yeah. with it whereas actually generally what I would say is start pretty loose with the suit and then yeah. even if you can't really feel it that much because then we can just crank up the, especially with the adjustable straps yeah, yeah. then you can crank up the straps then you can put your belt on a bit tighter you can even wear like a hoodie underneath yeah. or whatever but if it's too tight to start then yeah. it's just going to be a bad experience so yeah let, let get get going with it and yeah. do do whatever you want and we'll um are you, are you doing any suited pulling shannon or not you don't have a suit. So ge generally in terms of suit sizing for, for weight classes, roughly under, under, under 80s, roughly 46. If, if we're looking at the, me the metals, the metal, uh, this is a Jack and there's a King Pro. So, you, so usually I've seen with metals with guys under 80s, for, like 46 to 48, I'd probably start with the 48. Um, because, like I said, if go, going too big, you can you can always make it tighter. But if it's too tight, it's going to be no good to learn with. Under 90s, maybe 48 to 50 or 52. The sizings go up in twos, and then maybe 105s, looking at 50 to 54s. But I'm not sure with the with the ladies. We've got um, we've got Emma with a with a 50. Looks looks pretty good actually. And in terms of the, the, King, the King Pro and the Jacks, if people are looking for deadlift suit, King Pro, uh, single ply, the Jacks are the, are the multi-ply. So if you got to pick one to start off with when you're learning, I would definitely say single ply because it, it's just not quite as thick. So like we said before, if it's gonna be st stealing your start position uh, with the more tension it is, it's gonna be easier to learn with the single ply generally and then eventually maybe go to a double ply. So for people starting out, probably a single ply. How does that feel? Yeah, it feels okay. It feels okay, and then when you bend over, you can feel like yeah, yeah. tight, yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. And how, how's, this, how's this feeling? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I think my problem is my, when it gets, when I get strapped up, nothing. Yeah. My hips are yeah. up. Right, okay, cool. Yeah, look, let, let's see, see what's going on. See what this feels like, Emma. <laughs> Does that feel a bit better fit than? Yeah. But when you bend over, can you feel like there's a bit of? Yeah. A bit of tension, yeah. yeah. And you, well, you tried tried with your belt or not? I feel more with the belt. Yeah, I would do, yeah. Because then it's just, yeah. If you can, I'd, I'd generally say um, get used to doing it with, with the belt because then, because otherwise you, you might get the, what I see very often is people getting comfy with the, with the, with the suit and getting you, and then they've got to get used to something else. So if you can get into a pretty comfortable position with your belt, then you may as well get used to the positioning one. And also as well, another note, like why I'm a fan of the SBD belt is so you can, you know, when you're putting more layers on, that might be a bit too tight because that's obviously yeah, the, yeah, yeah, what yeah, you yeah, use yeah, for yeah. raw. It might, might be worth knocking out a notch in a bit or whatever. But let, let's see, see if, um, see how it feels compared to yours kind of thing. Looks good. Looks like you're getting a, you're actually getting a proper start position. Yeah, awesome. Because remember, if we, can, if we can get just, you know, so loose that you I'm get... Not exactly, either. yeah, yeah. Nice. So let, let's see what she does here. All right. Felt good, Be better than yeah, better. your suit. And 
and to be fair, that that's the advantage with the adjustable straps is you can. These aren't even particularly sized. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's it. But as you as you get more confident over the course of the sets, that technique's better, by the way, on that first rep. And I'll tell you why in a moment. So on the first rep, what you did better there was you stopped your knees shooting back. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. yeah but I, can, I know when I do it, but I can't stop myself from doing it. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. But it, it's, it's arguably even more important with, if you're wanting to like harness the power of the suit, yeah. because it, if, like, think, think about it. As you stood here with the suit, yeah, how much tension do you feel here mm. compared to here? Yeah. So, yeah, you go down here and you can actually feel a little bit of tension, but you compare it to like a stiff leg start position, you're not really getting that, that much tension in the suit. You understand what I mean? It's more so, like press in the suit, isn't it? Well, it can afford, it, just th think of, uh, of what you're actually doing. It's a cheat, yeah, cheat yeah, yeah. mechanism, isn't it? Yeah? So if I start here, there's not as much tension as if I go to here. Oh, I can feel it almost yeah, loading like a spring. spring. On, you know. Exactly, yeah. So then once you're in that position, you want to obviously try and do, like, be disciplined to maintain that as you break it off the floor, yeah? yeah. Because, but logically, what's the spring doing? The spring's pushing you out, yeah? yeah? So it's pushing you up to there, but you're saying, no, 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 I want to keep, keep there yeah. because you're helping me yeah. keep this, yeah? So just take a little bit, like it was easy, just take a little bit of speed out, yeah, yeah and just slow it down. Just have a go, Emma, see what you... Nice. So for some, somebody completely new to it, you can see that's on the yeah. borderline of being fucking uncomfortable, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas you, it looks perfect. Well, Could be quite... that thing. Yeah, 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 because now it looks like, oh, I reckon you're going to do a couple more sets and be like, yeah, it feels good, but I'm just not, it's not that, that, it's not that uncomfortable. And then we can just start cranking it up a little bit, yeah? But that's the beauty, is, it, is keeping it loose, but just feeling what we're going for. Just so you have almost like a little bit of support in your kind of raw start position, and then having the potential to crank yeah, it up yeah. a little bit more. And if you get to the point where we crank that up and it's still pretty comfortable. You could do stuff like, right, well, next session, put a hoodie underneath. Yeah, yeah. And it just, it just make a big difference. But doing the other way around too tight, yeah. you've got nowhere to go. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. I'd probably maybe even loosen the straps a little bit on that. Yeah. Or could you do it, see if it's any different not, not doing your belt this time. Leave it. Yeah, just leave it like that and see if you can get down to the bar a little bit easier. Nice. All right. Yeah, it felt better without it. It wasn't this tight. Yeah. What well, felt better then without doing your belt up yeah. in terms of getting the position. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. So what, what you'd probably be ideal doing is when you're doing it with the suit would be maybe knocking it out at least a notch or two. Okay. Because that, that's what you're sacrificing. You're getting more tension, but the more tension that you're getting is obviously more potential to lift more. Yeah. But it's all it comes with the risk of uh, stealing your, making the start position more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it felt, when I had the belt done up, it was really hard to get down. Into yeah. Position. So maybe even for the purpose of today, it might be worth but like borrowing an SPD belt or something so you can just, you know, change, change the tightness as you go along. A little bit slower off the floor. Nice, smooth. Cool. Yeah, that, that was good. Yeah, de definitely. We were coming up a little bit, but it might might be might be to the point where where actually you're just trying to get you're trying to start a little bit too low, yeah. just like just like with raw. Yeah. yeah? yeah. You know, if you, you see people in the squat right down, thinking yeah. they're in a good position, and then they 
as soon as it gets heavy, they go boom, like that. So, so know that the, the suit is affording you to get a little bit lower in that start position, but you're still gonna reach a threshold where it, it's inefficient, yeah? And I would encourage you to find that, try, try and find as low as possible. Basically, we're trying to find as low as possible without getting shot up, yeah? yeah? So it might be a technical thing for you, or it might just be that you're just trying to go a little bit too low, yeah? Maybe try on the next one, just a little bit, somewhere in between. Somewhere between your raw start position yeah. and where you just tried there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? yeah. Does it fit? Do, are you trying to get a different start position to raw on that? Yeah. Go somewhere. It, <laughs> we'll, we'll strip um, 10 kilos off each side yeah. and. Um, nice. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Lightning. We'll just stri strip a 10 off each side and then go somewhere in between. So you're still getting the benefit of the, the slightly lower hip um, in terms of loading the suit, but yeah, just, just try and do the same as what you just did, just to see if we, see if we're on the right lines. So we're looking to see that uh, the hips are coming up a little bit before. That's a little bit better, a tiny bit higher start position with the hips. That's better. That's nice. Do, do a couple more. That looks sweet. How does that feel? Yeah. That, yeah. That looks better. Yeah. yeah. Look like you're getting a nice bit of a bite point there where you're getting a bit of benefit going a little bit lower than usual, but you're not going too low so you're getting shot up. Yeah. yeah? Sweet. Looks good. Who's in? Just I'll get a couple of bars going if you want. Re remember at the at your comp you've got the um, it's deadlift bar, isn't it? And we've and we've actually got the the Cerberus bar here if you want to set that up, Shannon. It's so much higher, isn't it? Pardon? It depends what it is. There's a the there's. Is it an Ohio power bar or an Ohio deadlift, deadlift bar? bar? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, right, okay. I imagine it'll be similar, but I haven't used... Texas, Texas has got more width. Yeah, it's yeah, well, well that, that's a Texas. That's a Texas deadlift bar. Yeah. And the Cerberus one isn't quite as whippy. Yeah. It's I'm almost... with a less whippy bar, probably, also. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, but also knowing... No, also knowing how to like adjust it on comp day because inevitably you're going to do comps that you turn up and it's a different bar to advertised or you don't even know what bar you're going to use so it's good to know in your head well how do how do i how do i address like an axle bar to a stiff bar to a more whippy bar even like a it's going to make a difference on the day to are they using say are they using the steel plates where the center of mass is closer yeah, yeah, to the yeah. thing? Or are they gonna be using where it's more spread out? Because obviously when the, the weight's more spread out, you're gonna get, you're gonna get more, more yeah. flex and more whip, yeah? So basically the, 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 the big thing to, to learn in your head is like where, where that point of tension is. You know, like say when, when you get like a, a really whippy bar, it, a stiff, an axle bar for instance, yeah, yeah, yeah you've got all the tension as soon as you break it that first mill off the floor, yeah? Whereas if you go to the other end of the continuum when you've got like a, a whippy bar, like say what I've been using for the, the OSG qualifier where just bumpers right to the end. So then it's whipping, it's flexing and you're up to, you're up to here before, you've, before all the plates have come off the floor. So, so it's usually so, obviously somewhere in between, but it's just no, knowing to be like, being skillful enough to be versatile and think, all right, well, we've got a deadlift bar, but they're using metal plates. It might actually feel like, almost like a stiff, a stiff bar with bumpers, yeah? So, it's just knowing and not being kind of caught out on the day kind of thing. And also another little tip as well is like thinking, just knowing that the comp setup might be very different to the warm-up area. 
very yeah. very common to have like say the deadlift bar and the metal plate set up you're not allowed to touch it yeah. and then the warm-up area might be like say power bar and wide plates yeah yeah so it's just knowing that you know right i know i'm going to attack that uh, attack that even though i'm not gonna you know what i mean and you haven't had a go in the seat yet Could you like as you get down to position, can you feel a bit more supported than yeah. 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 Yeah, and just tr just try and go a little bit more extreme this time. All right, we're going all right. All right. Yeah, so that that looked a lot closer to the point where you might be. I felt like I was very low there. Yeah. So, little tip: what we can do now, if you're finding that, you know, you might. You might when the weight goes up, you might be like, oh, I don't know if I can maintain that position. It might be somewhere in between, probably. Yeah. But a little thing that I wanted to see, what wanted just to show her. So where you where your raw position. So if you think your optimal raw position might be with a higher hip, yeah. yeah? So obviously you're setting up from the distance away from the bar that, so, so the bar can come up as close to as possible, but without knocking it forward, yeah? yeah? So what we might have to do with some people with the, you know, if you feel like, oh shit, I'm getting more power as I get lower there, yeah. to allow your knees to track over the bar, you might find that, yeah, getting a little bit further back can allow that, that knee travel forward. Yeah. With a clean position. Yeah, like somewhere, somewhere between there. But that's why I'd recommend, I think it, you'd get a lot of value in doing like that little light session, because you can, you can just, you can work all this out. Yeah. So then you go to your heavier session or building up in weight or whatever, yeah. and you know the position you're committing to. Yeah? All right. Any different to yours? Any better or worse? Better than yours. It's better than cool. Mine. I just still don't know about compared to without it. Well, yeah. Just so I'm not sure. What weight is that? So that's 135, huh? And this is this is the thing because it, if it like it roughly as a target, I think most people should be able to get towards 10% more than the raw. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think you should be able to. Me a 12 inch, a top single. Should I try that from off the, the floor today? Yeah, d just sack off what I've yeah. said because that, that was based on you doing that. Basically, they've based that progression on you using the other yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can, yeah. so you're not as awkward getting that start position. But using that, yeah, yeah, go, go, go off the floor. And the thing that I, I think you, you should be looking at here is. Like, I'm trying to get my knees forward more. Yeah. But in doing so, I feel like I'm not over the bar enough. If, if that, I feel like my knees being forward is bringing my shoulders back. So yeah. I'm pulling more upright, if that makes sense. Yeah. Is that good? Or bad? Well, well, you need to. Th this is a thing that we're going to benefit from. And add this to notes on Tree Coach. Because next week, like I've just said to Shannon, like I think that um, doing the lighter session. 
where you can base because yeah, yeah, yeah. basically what you're doing today is you're exploring these new positions and trying to go heavy yeah do you know what i mean yeah. which i th i think you'd be better just what dropping what? it dropping it down to a hundred yeah do go over there. yeah yeah go, go, go on that bar yeah do like say three or four triples playing around and then come back to it and i suspect it'll feel better yeah okay but just, just playing around with the, like for you, it looks like you go into that and because it's reasonably heavy or it's a, it's a working weight, you're thinking about just fucking ripping it off the floor kind of thing. And the position that feels the best inevitably because the suit is pushing you, it's yeah, yeah, pushing yeah, you yeah. back. It's counterintuitive to think, no, fight the suit here yeah, yeah, yeah. to get down. Yeah. So that, that's what's happening. It just looks like you're, just looks like you're raw there, yeah, that's but with a suit yeah, on. Yeah, yeah? Like. Where, whereas actually, let's, let's try and go a little bit. Like you see, it'd be interesting watching Shannon's video back because you could see like a light bulb come on, you know, as you went to the lower hip and felt it. Do you think the lower hip's better than the lower hip? I do, yeah. Do. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. And the, the, I, think, I think the cue in difference with the suit and the lower hip is instead of like, you want to lead with the chest almost, don't you? Like, mm. That's how I think about it when I'm putting the right. lower hip. If I think about my chest up first, I'm going to get this pop and my hips, uh, my shoulders and hips rise at the same time. Yeah. So I get that nice pop. Whereas like when I'm raw, I don't think about my chest first as much, you know? Right. I don't know. I just, I don't know, I think in the suit I feel like weight, like a weightlifter, like a weightlifter. I, I, th weightlifter I, I think that's actually like a, a good cue for you to get your head around yeah. because that's going to... Because that's just what it feels like. Cause yeah. That's the position I would go to if I was doing a clean foot long Yeah, because if, if you can go into that position, then by definition it's good, that's going to load, load the suit more, yeah? yeah. It's that, that principle of basically what Rosie's doing over there people do get a benefit from that people will lift heavier just doing exactly the same position as the raw because it's almost like you're just getting it's just like your raw low skill in terms of get to get your head round but you're getting a lot more tension it's like maybe having an extra belt but in terms of actually harnessing the the pop you're not getting as much as just just simply from there to there you can feel you can feel more tension as you get low but that's the tough thing to get your head around is the, you're fighting against the, the suits trying to shoot you up here and you're going here, but you need to prove to what you're fighting against. You need to prove to your brain that this is the, no, 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 go here, go here. Yeah. And it's going to be easier. It feels fucking weird and more energy than just going there. But you could see that Shannon had a light bulb with it where she felt it. Yeah. You just haven't felt it yeah. yet. Yeah. Maybe maybe go a little, little bit, tiny bit looser, maybe. Like go, 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 like go into your, your start position. And go, like try and get that chest up and ease out. That's, that's it, let's just go a tiny bit looser, a tiny bit looser. Like say, say there. Because it just looks like you're getting a pretty good start position, but. Is it my just, hips too tall? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little yeah. bit. So it's the same principle as your raw in terms of you want to find that position where your torso is fixed and your hips and shoulders yeah. rise at the same time, yeah? That was better. Yeah. Do you see the second one yeah. there? Yeah, third one, better. Yeah? Nice. Where you, did you see the first one where a hit, yeah, yeah. hits came up? A little bit prematurely. First one was like, yeah. A bit. So may, maybe for you, maybe for you, Rose, it'll be easier to use the use the, do like a control D centre and use that to help 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 get you into a get you. Don't worry so much about the first rep just yet. Right, slow on the way down, and then just think as you go below the knee, keep that chest up. All right, and then squeeze into the floor. That looks better. Yeah, slow eccentric, slow eccentric. 
Go slow eccentric now. Chest up. Right, and then drive into the floor. Boom. Yeah? All right? Yeah. Do you feel any... any you know that one that where me and Shannon reacted and was like, yeah, that yeah, looks yeah, better? Yeah. Did you feel the yeah, difference? Right, well, f forget, it, forget about that, right? Yeah. We're just testing whether you got the buy-in yeah, yeah, yeah. that <laughs> you f it felt different, yeah, yeah. yeah? So now we know that it's just a skill deficit yeah. and it's just, right, how do we learn yeah. how to do that, yeah? You've got the buy-in though, that position was better, yeah? yeah? So probably now what you'd be able to, what to do on your next set, where well, you did maybe one or two like that, ignore the first rep for now, get it up to here, start your set up here. Go slow on that eccentric, have a feel around for that, that point yeah. on the floor, and then boom, drive into yeah. the floor. Do that, get a good five reps in a, in a row, and then if you get five reps in a row like that, then we'll move on yeah, to yeah, trying yeah. to set up with the first rep like yeah. that. Come on, straight back in. So use the eccentric to, to teach yeah. you where you should be, yeah? yeah? That kind of work, thinking about keeping that chest up a little bit more when you're going below the knee, yeah? Don't worry about the first rep, just get it up. Right, chest up now. Yeah, nice. Nice. Nice, little pause on the floor. One more little pause on the floor for five seconds. Hips a little bit lower. Hold, three, two, one, squeeze, boom. That looked better. Does that feel any different? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That definitely looks closer it's to where... positionally better. Yeah. Yeah. Right, now what you need to... And, we, and then like we're giving you a crash course in it here. Like I'm probably going to fry in your head a bit. Yeah. But, you know, when I'm saying hold that five seconds, that bottom bit, and you're yeah. like, ah, you held the tension really well. Yeah. Now what I want you to do is just focus now as you're setting up to the bar. Just think about that four or five seconds, what it felt like. Feel it, holding, holding that start position, create that same tension that you just created and see if we can do it on the first rep, yeah? yeah. It's not gonna feel good, it's gonna feel harder than 100 usually, because- I say, it does feel of course, than Of course, because we're, because we're, we're, we're basically, we're, we're making you spend more time at the position that yeah, you, yeah, your yeah. body doesn't get. And keeping the rest low, come on, get back in, find that position, don't worry about how, how hard it feels, yeah? I want it to feel hard because we're, we're re-patterning what you should be uh, feeling. And don't, don't, don't go for the lift until I say up. I want to see that you're in the, the right position. Create that tension where you pause. No, hips back and chest up a little bit more. Hold, three, two, one, boom. Good, one more, hold that bottom position, hold the tension. That looks even better. Go. Yeah, hold the bottom position. A little bit lower hip. Squeeze, go. Yeah, good stuff, rest. Yeah, that looks somewhere, somewhere a little bit, bit nearer, yeah? Do that for another two sets of three by yourself, and then, for me, you've made enough progress on that technically, but I know what you like, you're probably gonna wanna go and fucking test it over here, yeah? So do that. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do that really strict with that drill and then do, do whatever you want Thank on the you, other yeah. stuff, yeah? But that, that's, gonna, that's gonna be the thing to build on, yeah. definitely. That was positionally better. But yeah, it's gonna feel, feel, maybe even feel shit for two or three sessions and then you'll just have a breakthrough yeah. with it, yeah? Okay. Very good. Fighting with your own ego, yeah, right? Yeah, because because your raw is feeling good, yeah. isn't it? That's the thing. Oh my, fucking feeling like an animal. Okay, you on program me like a top double. I'm thinking, well, I'm not using the suit. Yeah, because it's because well. I want to. Yeah, 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 I want yeah, that gratification yeah. of hitting the. Yeah. Yeah. That that's that's my problem. That's the issue. I get it because I'm exactly the same. I just want to fucking go heavy on what feels yeah. good, but it's like taking two sets back to go yeah, five yeah, forward. Yeah. yeah. yeah? And it's a necessary evil because you're going to be gutted if you just came below someone on deadlift and they were pulling in a suit and you were pulling raw. Yeah? Oh, well, I pulled fucking this, this amount raw. Nobody cares. How long have I got? 
to Good be luck. honest with you, I'm probably not going to have access to one of these suits mm. on the day. So, I mean, I'm in either that one or Raw anyway. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, should I just scrap the suit completely until then? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Because I could probably get him get me one, but I don't think he's going to get me one now. And even if he does get me one now, he's probably not going to come for a few weeks, is he? Yeah. No. I don't know the answer. <laughs> the answer. No. So, I can keep trying in that one. What, what, the, the answer that you've got today is that we've seen... This is better. Yeah. Definitely. This is and, better. and also, you, 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 the positional change yeah, yeah. is step like one on the in that, exactly in that suit to see how that feels yeah but what i don't want to do is waste time trying in a shit suit i get it i get you know it what I'm saying? yeah um, yeah tough the one that, no, it's 160. i reckon i'll get four to six reps raw at that yeah um, but i don't i don't know if i, I think at the minute in that suit i'd, I'd get one or two yeah well, that, that's it. It's only, only you can answer that. Like, if you're going to get six to eight raw, could potentially get ten in the suit if you can, if you if you can get one. So, I don't know. Because by the way, like, as you get the idea, I could talk about any of this shit for for days. So, <laughs> I'm obsessed a bit. <laughs> so. Yeah, we want it to be about you and getting the most value. So do you want do you want to set up the log frame, whatever? Probably probably save stones to the last if we're. Yeah. I'd encourage you all to use tacky. So probably you, all to the end. So yeah, um, yeah, just use me for whatever you want, guys. <laughs> so. So do you think your, your grip's going to be fine for this? It's not going to be a grip thing, it's going to be a speed thing? No, it's not even a speed thing, it's a pickup thing. Oh, right, because okay. Because my speed from 135 to 175 is, is the exactly same. the same. Yeah, okay. But my pickup adds about two seconds. Oh, right. <laughs> On, honestly, then, I think a game changer for you is going to be... Where do you put your hands? Right at the front. Right at the front, yeah. I think, yeah. I think sticking with that and maybe even... Maybe suggest it to Moll in the feedback putting in some uh, like frame deadlifts yeah. at the end, at the end of the session yeah. and it doesn't have to be that what, what's your what's your weight 180 yeah. so even even doing like say 130 or something for a couple of sets of five at the end and building that up and getting strong that's what I, I've recently done for the, the the Arnold's comp that we did with the fat back farmers thing and at the start of the thing that was my thing it was like the pickups max yeah. whereas I got to the end of the thing and I was hitting what I was struggling with at the start of the thing for one I was hitting for like a set of 15 on the deadlift yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, but but yeah what let, let's see your hand position on this so your hand positions at the front yeah. let's have a look at the foot position right okay right put it down so can you feel it swinging forward a little bit a little bit yeah yeah so I think, just have a look at my feet here. So you're around here, yeah. and it looks like you're kind of like doing like a normal deadlift with it, right? Yeah. Whereas what I like to envisage, yeah, imagine, is it almost like a car deadlift? Right. So actually, yeah, try, and you might, you'll find a sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't just copy me, but you're like there, and that's why you're deadlifting it, and it's like, it's like swinging forward a little bit. Whereas if you get, you get to a point where you can put your feet further forward yeah. and it can't swing up, it just levers back. So look at my feet here. It's, I'm, I'm, exaggerating, I'm exaggerating it too much, but as I break off the floor, I can't even do it. <laughs> uh, try, try, just try, try again. Feet, feet a teeny bit further forward than they were. Yeah, move your feet. Let's, let's go there. Yeah.
Yeah, because because what 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 I almost like like to imagine it as is is basically using that leg drive to peel that front end off the floor. Yeah, so you because then it's all moving like like when we did them for Cardiff. Yeah. 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 And then. Uh, and then what, what, what you could do is your next set, Becca, probably drop the weight down a little bit yeah. and then do a set of, um, save my spider. <laughs> yeah, feet, feet, feet a little bit further forward and actually use the lever of the... Feet together. Feet where, wherever you, I'm, t I'm talking about the center. Well, you put your hand, hands in position. So what you're doing there, your center, your mid foot is behind the hand. Whereas what I, you can, you can almost get mid foot in front of the hand, yeah? Have we going to switch stance? Cool, so just think about where you... I think that would split stance though, in my head, would almost probably make that easier because if you're can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. further forward, it's going to be, like, it's an awkward pick up further forward, isn't it? Because you're scared you're going to rock back. Yeah. Because if you've got one foot, like, slightly forward than you would be and your other one maybe in the midline of the frame, yep. it's going to be an easier take off. <laughs> I the, the, why, but well, <laughs> the, the si sim simplest way to think about it, right? Split stance, and I learned this with the with the yoke going to, really heavy with it. I got to the point where people said on the split stance you'll get to a point where you won't be able to go heavy. It's yeah. faster for the light stuff. Whereas actually, I got to the point where I'm doing the ma doing the maximal weight with that in the split stance, and the reason why yeah. is because it's a shorter pickup. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same with the frame there. Yeah. You're not actually <laughs> needing to pick it up quite as high. So if you've got that single leg stability from your split jerks and your split stance and the other stuff, yeah. it's gonna be awesome. fucking really good. Cool. Yeah. Nice, Molly. Easy. So you can see, see Becca, let's strip, strip the weight off, off this, right? What you need to fix is the, is the thing popping for, just take these off as well. What you need to fix, 100%, is that as you're popping it off the floor, yeah. it's like swinging forward. Yeah. Do you feel that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's kind of going like there and peeling forward, yeah? So what we need to learn is how to, you see how that's coming back ever so slightly? So what you can do is, this is what you learn with the deadlifts, doing the deadlifts, is actually where your feet should be feet a little bit, see my hands are behind my foot, feet ever so slightly there. <laughs> Whereas before you were like here. So then it's always gonna, it's always gonna be peeled forward, yeah? So you're using that kind of, do, do that. And let's just see where, it, where your feet end up. Yeah, it's, yeah. My problem is it's like I'm good. It's yeah. all the same, all the same speed and same pickup until about 155, 160, yeah. and then it plummets and the pickup. Yeah. That's my biggest problem. Just do. Can you do a set, set of five, just deadlift, and don't look where your feet are. I just want to see if it, your foot position changes over the course of the set. That's better. That's better. That's better. That's better. Hold it, put it down to the floor. Right. Go again, one, one more. Right, that. Put it down. So that, just have a look at where you are now. And that's where, you, that, that, forget everything that we've said or tried to work out. That's where, that's where you need to start. Did you feel how the second, third, fourth rep and that were coming back towards you, yeah. not kicking forward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's the value you're getting from the deadlift is actually learning yeah. where, you, where, where your feet, gonna, yeah. yeah? That's your ideal line. So the, it's coming back towards you and not popping forward, yeah? yeah? And then once you've learned that, then you can, play around and go into the split stance, but it still wants to be the same arc, even yeah. with the, yeah? yeah that's, what you, that's what you need to find. I don't need split stance with anything either. Like, Yoke or, like any, well, band pick up anything. I always do a straight. Yeah. I think with the frame, with it being, 
But yeah, that, that's the big thing for you on those pickups. You need to find, like, like what I'm saying is you go to build up to the point of failure, max frame pickup, I think you're gonna fail because you, you're not gonna give yourself your best chance of displaying how strong you are because as you initiate that first rep, it's going forward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's hard, isn't it? Because the problem is, it's every all frames are going to be different, and every frame is going to have a different like centre. Definitely, line of gravity, definitely, definitely. Like centre line of mass. Yeah, yeah. So that's where the struggle is going to be, isn't it? Is getting mm. that centre line of mass so that it's like spot on, and when you pick it up, it just goes up straight yeah. instead of having that bit of a weird sway to it. Yeah. But but because it's because we're making it a lever, it's not going to be straight up. It's yeah, actually going to be back front, to it. Yeah. It's actually going to be swinging back. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So, so yeah. Th thing what you'd what you'd look for for Emma technique wise is, and to be honest, on the day it's just going to be for you. I reckon you're going to be so strong for the weight that it's just going to be just for, just leg it basically. But I mean, in terms of training, what I think is good for everybody to do is they look like the the swinging backwards and forwards and side to side. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think generally a good cue to think of is almost keeping the the f like the frame, try and keep that like parallel to the floor, okay. and try and keep the the sides parallel to the floor, and that's going to teach you how to basically keep your vertical torso and therefore move your hips properly to to maintain that, which in turn is going to be better for you know if you're on your if it's really really heavy for any of you this and like on your grip limit then that kind of lateral shuffle and that forward to backward shuffle might just be enough to just take you over the edge. Like your grip's gonna be easy. If you're going max, max on this, yeah. it's about preserving the grip. It's not just about how strong your grip is, yeah. which a lot of people make the error of training. They're getting the, getting the grip really, really strong, but then they're not practicing the movement efficiency enough. Yeah. So they might have a really, you get people who've got really strong grip on like farmers holds and Hercules, but then they go to movie farmers and yeah. they don't understand why they're, they're not doing well. But it's, it's often because the, the movement, the, they can't move the hips independently of the torso. So you're going like this and then it's either going to the side or forwards and backwards. So look, go, go again, just take a little bit, take 10% of the speed out of it. And just imagine you're trying to make the, make the, frame like glide along the floor looks like it's gliding along the floor and sacrifice a little bit of speed for now because we can always add that back in that's brilliant that's so much better I don't know if you got the video of the last one but it's like it's like kind of a lovely place and then what you can do on top of that is just then build your times on top of this do you know what I mean and that, that technique there is going to be a lot, a lot more scalable to maximal weights in the hands, yeah? Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you go to like somewhere on a grip limit, you know, 15 meter max or something, that, that technique is going to be more scalable than the one yeah, going to the side, good. yeah? In terms of your, the hand preservation. And you can get so good with it, with this kind of, if you, if you focus on this uh, like grip preservation thing, that I've done it now. I, I don't know if you remember, you videoed a set in here when I did like, I think it was like 131, 20 meters there and back. And I remember that set and I picked it up and I was like, fuck me, my grip's gonna go any second. But because I've been focusing on the efficiency, I was right on the grip limit, but I could just keep going. Yeah, and it just sure. wasn't falling out. Yeah. Whereas if I hadn't been practicing the movement efficiency, like in it, when I'm doing the lighter stuff, it'd be like, right, I'm on my grip limit. And then as soon as a little bit of lateral or forward, it's out of your hand. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it, that, that, it's all right, don't worry. Say again. Yeah, the, prin the principles remain the same. What's what?
All right. You have a new, do you want to go at this? What weight's this, Mo? 170, that. 117. Do you want to do it with the fives off? Or do you want to just go in? You'll be all right after your deadlift, won't you? It's not rolling, is it? Just cut it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I say, just have a just have a have a play with it, have a go with it, and then I'll come in and jump in and look to optimize, yeah? Cool. So I, I, I think in terms of like, you, you've all done, obviously done farmers in the qualifier, haven't you? Where it was really light, we would say, would we agree? Yeah, and it was, I think the really light and quite a short distance, it was like 10 meter drop and turn. So it was all in the, like you all smashed it, yeah? All absolutely brilliant technique in terms of fast drop and turn. You're not even, probably not even getting up to your top speed because it's so short. But like if you like your your turn straight down, stay low, boom, like amazing. Whereas this is going to be obviously a little bit heavier, a little bit more tax on the pickup, a little bit more tax. Probably feel a bit heavier with it being wider as well, and also you're going a little bit further distant. Um, yeah. So so I so I think maybe com compared to the say the, the farmers in the qualifier where, say I, I reckon a lot of, lot, lot of it's based on how good you are at the uh, efficient with the, pick, the pickup, you know, like say people fumbling and then taking time at the other side, it's gonna kill the times. Whereas this, I think you're gonna get a lot of value in actually developing top speed, like in terms of the bit, you know, where you're accelerating first four or five meters, it might take you five or six meters to get up to your top speed, yeah? Whereas actually, you've, if you're up to your top speed, then you've got another 10 meters to, yeah, I think going faster. So I, I think maybe going, I think maybe do, doing some like, say 20 meter sets would be good. And, and just actually getting, getting faster at that top, top end. What do you think? I feel all right, I've got quite a long arm. Yeah. So I'm actually more comfortable on a train than what I am farmers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. So I've got you doing those ten by ten meters, haven't I? Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, if that's like an honest like analysis of what you're doing, like maybe even breaking that up, maybe even doing five meter drop and turn. So you're getting that extra drop and turn in there, yeah? If you think you're getting up to your top speed and you're bossing it, like actually... Yeah, no, you, you look, look good to be fair. Hey, come on then, let's get, get going with it. You, you hit it um, nail on the head before when you said that point where your arms are relaxed, that's the... Yeah, nice. Yeah, very good. Woohoo. How are we getting on? Yeah. And th this is a pr this is a prime example of, you know, like, say you could ask me or Molly, oh, where should I put my hands or whatever. This is the best. Like, yeah. Exactly. I've just tried it there because I thought, I wonder whether it's going to be easier for me because I had it at yeah. 85 on my arms and it hurt. And then I thought, I'll try it on my hands and just with my hands around instead of like that. And I, fucking, I could hardly pick it up there. So I think, nah, I'm going to have to go arms. But it's one of them, isn't it, where you should, well, if we train it a lot, yeah, like, you, you, you will, will get used to you it. You will get you used to it, it. yeah. Because it feels bad now. <coughs> we were just saying there, We've got this, and in the same pump, so yeah. Yeah. So, that's awful. 
have you, have you had a go at, have you had m m much? <laughs> It'd be, be worth having a go at that, because honestly, that, that is something, the zurch yoke, it's something that within a couple of sessions, you find the spot, it just doesn't hurt at all. If you get your positioning right, honestly. Because if you, your arms are hurting, it, if, it's, if it's bicepy, it just means your position's probably a bit, yeah, probably a little bit forward. Well done. <laughs> well, that fucking sucks. Yeah, so you just need to keep playing with that. I, I think I got to a point on this where I wasn't I using my forearms at all. That. Yeah. But I just don't think, I don't think where I have them. Yeah, I was getting it. I was like getting it there and running with that. Honestly, it felt great. Yeah, that's greasy, that. Is this for a different column? Yeah, that, that's for the UKNS. The, it's like a, they're doing a metal one instead of a thingy one. Right, okay. And the technique's a bit different. Yeah, that's just like a sandbag, isn't it, really? Yeah. Cool. You're still on? So, Shannon, what I'd say for, for something like this, this is a good example in Strongman where you might have like one of the specialist implement so you can do this. Like, that's basically comp weight, isn't it? Pretty much. Or is it above? I don't know. What is it? I don't know. What weight is this, Mal? 73. Oh, yeah. 17 pounds. Yeah. So, for you, like, that's above comp weight. So, I don't think that would be the best thing to train with like, all the time, if you will. Yeah. So, because, because, say again. Yeah. But I, I think there's a lot, lot of value in using that to learn your ideal positioning and being like, all right, when, I, when, I, when we use the Husa sandbag, I put my hands here, mm -hmm. I put my hips here, I put my belt like that, yeah. or whatever. So then you, you, you know the specifics, but then train something sub-maximal, like that, I think that 45 sandbag, you know, the black one. That's what you used last week. I think that'd be perfect for you to, to build the footwork and endurance and maybe even put in like a plate on top of that yeah. as your progression. I don't think rather than mauling yourself any with. Any from a normal one. I think yeah. it, it, it I think with any sandbag, I would find the higher you can get it, the easier it is. Because I, whenever I was doing sandbags, when I had them low, my legs would burn out really, really fast. And you'd feel it like in your stomach. The higher you get it, you get it up onto your chest and you're holding it mm. like sort of there. But the majority of the weight is here. Yeah. So your balance is a lot better. And like you're using your bigger muscles in the back of your legs more than it was. Because I think that's where loads of people fall on sandbags is the quads flow out straight away. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does make sense. I just I I, I I don't agree. Like for for me, I like I I prefer the other like a lot. I think the the thing that I agree with is find <laughs> is finding finding a good position, and sometimes like that, you go you go, the higher you get, the better. You know, you having that. Uh, Heather was saying you know, with a face back like that felt better yeah. because you've got this high and therefore that kind of, the, the heavy wide bit centre of mass is, yeah. is balanced. Whereas I actually find with like a sandbag, if I have one there versus there, providing it's not getting in the way of my legs, I, I prefer, prefer it lower. Um, and, the, and my theory on it is like the kind of, front squat versus zercher squat thing, it, all skill being equal, I think most people will lift more in a zercher squat because of the, the bit, basically the moment arm or the lever thing being closer to your hips. And like I've said with Stone recently, like, you know, about some people who hold it really high and then struggle to stand up with the stone yeah. versus squeezing it in low and stand it, standing. Yeah, see, I'm a high stone loader as well, mate. I, all, everything is this. So. Yeah. I just, I just obviously hate my lunge. 
<laughs> but yeah, I think it, it will change from implement to implement. And like we're saying with this stuff, right, what's most important, rather than trying to copy someone else, is just how can you set it up and find your, your ideal position? You haven't? Good. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> nice. That looks really good. <laughs> Very good. Well done. Yeah, I hate it. I normally hate it. That's better for me because I've got little arms. I can only like, and if it's like a to get around it. Yeah. But this is what I do. This is what yeah. I do with calling. What what did you find helpful on the pickup here, Mo? Nice, Shannon. Well done. Does that feel like it's wanting to slide down, Shannon? Yeah, cool. So the, there's a, so you could see with uh, with Shannon over here, like like knowing how, how like fit she is and in terms of conditioning and stuff. Why you could see that she's put off by a little bit by the it was wanting to move a little bit. I shouldn't have my hands like I shouldn't have my hands like I should have put them like that. It was my hands were going as well. Yeah. But and it looked. I think it's just because I was worried about the pickup. That yeah. I was in, a weird position for the carry. Yeah. So. And it, it also looked like if you let it slip down a little bit, yeah. then it, to be a bit easy for your grip, it looks like it maybe would have impeded your legs if you'd have let it go a bit lower. Yeah. So there's a couple of things that you could do. You could, you could take a little bit more time, with, well, not a little bit more time, but on the pickup, you know where you're resetting your hands, yeah. Yeah. trying to get them a tiny bit lower. Yeah. Because it looks like you're almost like, say roughly you were at the middle of the bag there maybe try 60 40 towards the bottom yeah. and then therefore you're going to have you're going to have a better you you might find it easier to to actually grip because it's like the smaller bit of the bag and if a bit slips through as you go in it's yeah. not going to impede and if your legs up my arms and I'm yeah. at the bottom, it's going to be higher up on my body isn't yeah it? exactly because i don't want to be like tension i don't want to have like tension in my bicep i'd rather just exactly. keep my arm kind of relaxed and just have my hands locked and I can just focus on moving them. Yep, exactly. That, and that's the sweet spot with any like endurance front carry, in my opinion, is finding that rack position where you can actually chill out with the arms, yeah? yeah? So the other little thing, and again, I don't like telling people to do this as, because it, it changes from comp to comp, is wearing like, say, some kind of belt or loose buckle and almost just, it's yeah. just there as a bra breaking mechanism. That's what, that's what, what, what I did. Yeah. That's what I did at that, that England's comp last year, under 80s. And it's got like 170 metres or something. Yeah. I just sat on my belt and was just chilling. Like, it was ridiculous, really. It, it, it was ridiculous. But, but just tr try, try again, try hands a little bit lower. And uh, do you want another set of that? Or do, and another th little thing for like what Shannon could do, for instance, to find out a hand position. In fact, we'll do it in a set. Once you, Rosa, could you put it back on that block? Well, in fact, we'll just bring it to, you do your, you do your set. 
but return it to the block on the way back. So we've just done, done the uh, si similar principle with, uh, with Becker going heavy with the, heavy ho the metal hooser before. We're, we were, we're, to facilitate going heavier, we just got her to set up from a block and then therefore she could get the exposure of doing the heavy weight, but it's not, it's not as taxing to, to, like, to get to the point where you're, you're holding it. So that's what we do with Shannon, because you could see the pickup was the hard bit for her, but in terms of training effect, we're not, we're not trying to get stronger today, we're trying to optimize your positioning, yeah? So the, the thing, what, what you could do here is just, just, yeah, just do a little two meter, return it to the block, and just put your tray hands in slightly. Well, do, do a set of, do like a, a set of three, where you just pick, little turn, return to there, Try hand somewhere different, try hand somewhere different again, and then we'll decide the best one, yeah? Yeah? Uh, yeah. Cool. And, and this, by the way, this is why, like, I never prescribe anybody to say, do it this way, right? Because everything's like on a sliding scale, yeah? So she's going, the, she might find that the highest, the lower she picks up on here, the easier the grip, but it'll reach a threshold where, like what I'm saying to Becca before, where I, I kind of disagree with what she was doing before, was the higher that, I, I can picture me doing that and getting it really high, feeling amazing from a grip, but getting it so high that the heavy, the heavy mass, yeah, and just just being more, more be, because it's further away from my hips, like more energy to. Yeah, the higher it is as well, the more lean back it is. And then the exactly, more, exactly. Yeah. 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 You want to be like kind of as middle as you can be with your grip yeah. and sort of. That that's the key. That is the key. So, yeah, my, my theory is as low as possible without impeding your legs with your grip good enough. Yeah. Your grip just needs to be good enough. You need to think, can I hold that for the 90 seconds or two minutes or whatever it is, yeah? And, and ideally, like, like you say, almost like interlocking your fingers and then relaxing your arms, yeah? Cool. Do you, do you want to have a go from the floor? See if you can do it, or have you had enough of that? Yeah, okay. Have, have, a, have a go, the unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> you might not notice a, a massive difference on these if you're interlocking your fingers, but, the, uh, but when, you, when you actually need your grip and a bit of... You, you probably notice a difference on the pickup, actually, Shanna. Yeah. Come on then. So you just, need, you just need to take your time on the lap to make sure that you're getting your hands in the right position. How would you go about the lap? Like I did like squat down or would you just be in knee zone? Hmm, not sure. Me, yeah. me I, I... Yeah, just on the lap, can I? Because I think it's... Yeah. Yeah, yeah yours looks good. I, 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 I think it's it practically It look, looked good, Shannon, to be fair. Oh, nice, that's better. Good. Is that better? Yeah? Sweet. Nice. Very good. Well done. Yeah. So one little thing that Shannon may consider is for me, me, maybe being really picky. I, I'm not sure if it, I think, I think one of them, I think the ones that where you pick from the block looked 
better than that? Did it just feel exactly the same? Um, no, I feel like it was a little bit higher when I picked him up the block. Exactly. Yeah. So. But I think that's just a, something I can change when I'm going from last to up. Yeah. I maybe mean, just pull it in a little bit higher. And, you could do that, or what you might find easier is taking an extra little pop, you know, where you've got it here, instead of trying to wrestle to get your hands in that lower position, just actually go in. Yeah, I'll show you with that light bag. So, you know, like you were, like, say, here, and you're, like, trying to wrestle for that last bit, you might just find just going, you know, like that with your hand just to get there instead of there, yeah. yeah? You know, instead of wrestling, like actually just going right. like that, yeah? Like the, the point is I'm confident that she should be developing her footwork and getting there. Uh, I think she's going to get timed out in two minutes, whereas... It's about grit, isn't it? Like, who can, like, that's what I feel like it is. It's like a yeah. pushing, just keep him going. And yeah. Like a very long type thing. Yeah, I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, but I'm not sure it is for you. I think, I think you could maybe go for three minutes. But, but any, anyway, let, let's see, let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm just going to go for this Yeah, always wait before you do samba. And I know because my biceps proper knacker after I've done it. Yeah, that's normal. So, do, do your biceps have to give done this? Uh, not that one, that metal one, yeah. But I don't know. Oh, yeah, I'm quite army off the floor, I think. This is the thing, like, like you do. A bit of weightlifting, don't you? Like yeah. cleans and stuff. So you think you you do you when you when you're cleaning, say what, 70, 75 You've done it, yeah. So you know, when you're cleaning seventy five kilos, you're not going like this, are you? No. Because it's fucking useless. Yeah. Yeah. If you are, it's all of that just goes out. Yeah. Out so so end. this is what you've got to kind yeah. of reprogram in your head. And that's why it's useful talking to you, right? Because you know, like what you were saying before, you. So what, what you need to do is just imagine it's weight. Imagine these arms here. Imagine you haven't got these, yeah. And you've just got to imagine your hands are like pieces of string with hooks on the end, yeah. And you're just just trying to attach it there. You're not relying on like imagine this kind of squeeze that you're making here. I actually like using my. Hand. I actually find it more beneficial to try and use my hands as like shovels. Yeah, so to get there, to get a bit of purchase, rather than squeezing yeah. the arm so much, yeah? So whatever you have to take here, I'm actually using a lot of wrist flexion there, yeah? And then trying to keep this, if anything, using your biceps is almost like, like isometrically to enhance the squeeze rather than, yeah. rather than actually flexing, yeah? yeah? So they're just connected, and then like Shannon says, we're just almost like, See my arms are yeah. straight there, and then to get this kind of pop up, you're driving through the legs. Yeah, we're not biceps going yeah. up. So arms straight, even there. Like that pop there, that's all coming from the legs. Yeah. So that's what you, this, that's what you kind of need to reprogram yourself to do. I'm a bit more strong. Oh, yeah, but, but also you've got you've got some <laughs> you, like you discredit yourself because you've also got elegance with your your cleans and your jerks yeah. and stuff. So saying you're monstrous is just an excuse. Like you you have got the skills to do it. See, I'm just I like I hook it onto my arm. I can't. It's okay to yeah. kind of bend because you want to squeeze into it. But you just don't want to like curl up. Yeah, you're not. So if like I get, still have a stand up there. So drop your hip and just drive with your leg and deadlift it. I feel well done. I feel well done. Your hands like. You just sit there and deadlift that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was so spiral. <laughs> yeah.
to be fair, it is it is difficult to practice the principle with this because you do have to squeeze with yeah. your arms a little bit. You have to. But I mean, it'd be good for you to drill it with, say, a sandbag, for instance, where you can actually just go, right, I'm literally tensing my tricep yeah, yeah, yeah. there so I can't to lock that bicep thing. So I'm actually going here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. And then if I want to get it up here, I'm not allowed to bend my I'm not allowed to like actively. Oh, so I'm going. Back. I'm actually better yeah. there when it's not standing up, Ross. Yeah. I can do it straight right from. You know what I mean? That felt. I'm using, when it's up rice, I'm hooking my arm up there. Yeah. Whereas on the floor, I can't do that, so. Cool. And then on the hold, another yeah. little thing, if you feel like your bicep on the hold. Like actually thinking of like more of like a uh, like a seated row rather than a bicep yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so actually holding it. So watching the lines then. So like here instead of going squeezing yeah, yeah, yeah. in with the elbows, like actually just that feels yeah. <laughs> look like actually more stable but a lot more energy efficient. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing, isn't it? It's the time, it's yeah. different, isn't it? Yeah. So you need to clear out the Oh, and an, 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 another, another major thing as well, like is for all front carries, a thing that, thing that I find is beneficial, if you feel that you're having to produce arm tension to stop the bag falling, yeah. alter the positioning, alter the rack position. So, the way that I, I like to do this is the bigger the implement, mm the more I kind of posteriorly tilt my pelvis or like tuck my tailbone under. So if I go here, I can relax my arms more. Yeah? yeah? So the, the, I generally feel the lighter it is, the more bicep you can let it be because that's going to allow you to get in a position where you can move faster. But if you're like, fuck me, my arms are going to be smoked in a, like 10 seconds. Like actually, just almost like, Sit, sit in the hip under like that. Exactly that yeah. Oh, I don't want to tax the bicep on that then after the stones and I'll so that's the thing as well, isn't it? Yeah. So if you if you genu genuinely feel like it's, it's near the limit, like that's a soft knees and you tuck the tailbone under. Or even even if you get to the point where you're like, shit, I'm done, I'm gonna drop it. Bend the knees. Are you it's under. You can reset. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that would be handy. Definitely. Yeah. Like have a rest. Yeah. That's what you can do. Can you see that sort of position? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like there, you can just grind. Yeah. Grind. And then one more thing that you can see with you, Rosie, when you're doing your your frame carries, like your your, your footwork look really good. Your feet are passing really closely. And then obviously you can't really see your feet on it, but your feet are going out, yeah. well, which everybody's do. But I just think your feet probably, if you think about it, your, your feet probably feel like they're going really close together, or a lot closer than they actually yeah, yeah, are. Yeah. Whereas I actually think drilling that, drilling it in training when you're doing these, to, no, no, to actually get you, your feet close together. More close to an actual stride. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because you, you with, probably feels like you're going, your feet are going out a little bit, but they're going out quite a lot. Yeah. So, like any given distance, I'm sure. Yeah, you, you're having to you're having to do more steps yeah. to go any different. Any, so you might actually feel like in your head that you, you go, your feet yeah, are going to yeah, knock yeah, into yeah, each yeah. other, but that's going to yeah. improve that that footwork efficiency. So that's a good little thing to think of. Okay, have we got any anything more, any help on log or anything? Or do you just want to go into stones? I'm assuming you're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think we might do that. See if I can do four. Yeah. Oh, shit. So it was a little bit heavier. I was going to say, it's not a bit of a heavier. On that. It's just awkward, isn't it? But I'm, I'm used to, I'm used to doing it, so I'm 
set with that for your confidence so oh, I can do complete but then if you you know I, this is the kind of thing where as fit as you guys are in terms of recovery like I'd be, I'd be doing that for a comp weight like today this week or something so you get a stake in the ground like, oh, that's how 160 meters feels or yeah. that's how 120 meters feels or you're like oh fuck me I'm running, I'm running out of time. I need to get fa like I can do two minutes. Obviously, it's hard because you're going two minutes. But it might be actually the that's the thing that I found with my when I, when I've done the done the ones with the time cap. If I'm doing like 75 seconds with like the comp weight for me like 100 110, like I'm actually run, like I can do that time no problem. It's actually how fast can I cover? Do you know what I mean? Um, so, so actually to d dictate what you need to work on, right? for you, I, I think it might actually be, well, for me, uh, I need to cover more distance in the other game. It's two minutes, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas for you, you're going to, you're going to definitely going to run out of time. You're going to be going till the whistle. So actually, I think you working on the, you, you don't need to get your endurance better, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think you'll get a lot, lot of value in, you know, say you did two minutes now, yeah. you obviously before, but, I but yeah. I think I'm the other, I need to lose my endurance, yeah. I think you're probably Yeah, exactly, and, that, and, that, and that's why, um, obviously, pe people need to, need to train, it's slightly yeah. different. But, say, say the scenario, say you did it two minutes now, you did. 200 meters, for, say for instance, or 180 meters, and you'll be, we blew the whistle. What we need to work out is right, well, we don't need to get your endurance any better. We need to, how are we going to get you to 200 meters by pump day? So then you could break, then it's improving your footwork. So then you could be doing, like, say, say for instance, you could break your training down into three one minute sets with a 45 kilo bag. Doing a hundred meters per sixty that seconds. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll do a slightly nice. You could tell them. Yeah. I think yeah. 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 Ready, set, go. Come on, one big set. Come on. Come on. Down. Let's get three or four more legs, Shannon. Come on. Come on. Just keep grinding. Come on. This is going to give you so much data for your planning. Come on. Come on, Shannon. Come on, Shannon. Get there and back. Get to that white line and then just go. go to Come on. You can do it. Come on. 
You've got 20 seconds left. Here you go. Come side. on. Just keep moving. Keep oh, don't moving. put it on that block. Just don't keep put moving. it on that block, Shelley. Go on. Go on. Come on, you can Come on, you Come on you've got me. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Yes. Come on. So it's having the feedback that gives you, I think. Yeah, what do you think? Um, I just need to keep doing it. For my second time doing it. Yeah, definitely. But I, I think I think the thing that you change is you're going to one the balance position. It, it, thir it was thir 31 seconds where you where you went to where you went to uh, rearrange your hands. Yeah. So what you were trying to what what was happening? You were going to that position where it was sliding down again. So I think you know just getting if it's roughly around the middle of the bag, say maybe like towards the bottom third, maybe will be that position. What just feels locked in all the way. Yeah, if you're having to fuddle up. Yeah, mess around at 30 seconds, do you know what I mean? It felt better when I changed it at 30 seconds. Exactly, exactly. So, we, exactly. so it's like looking at the video and then trying to find, to settle near that position. Yeah. That's good. Sure. Well, it I don't know what distance, but we have to work it out. Yeah, and then... And then say say you did I don't know say you did like one four and then <laughs> like you could do a session three sets of eighty meters and try and get that down to like sub six seconds. Are you even just doing that session? You learn by the third set. Your third set probably be the easiest, and then you would probably learn where to oh shit. So much better when I put my hands here. From the feedback. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Just to make Thank you. But yeah. well, I, I think I think taking that that approach and bit like analysing it like that rather than it's very easy. To, like a lot of people just take the approach of oh just do grindy sets or just just fucking just go ham on it or whatever. Whereas actually just making little tweaks with your your position. Yeah. And. Uh, that's what changes it all, isn't it? Mm. I think with something like this, when it's two minutes, it's not about what you like in the last 30 seconds, it's the first 30 seconds, because if you tire yourself out more than you need to be in the first, exactly. the rest of it's just going to never... Yeah. yeah. Where are you? Um, nice one. Thank you. Come on then. You've got a little tip, what you've got to imagine, right? When you've been doing your push presses, you did push presses at comp, didn't yeah. you? And then you go into split jerk, and think it's going to be great. But what, you, what you're doing on your push presses is your line looks really good. Like your dip looks like it's going straight line, yeah. pretty much. Whereas what it looks like on the, just on the first split jerk, because you're focusing on the, probably yeah. the split and the balance, because it's obviously new. Yeah. It looks like you were kind of dipping forward, almost like it almost, yeah, it was almost like you were preempting to jump forward like that. Yeah. So what, we, what we've got to do is kind of split it up into two in your head. Yeah. You've got to, if you look from the side and slow-mo it, it should be absolutely identical. The dip and drive should be identical to yeah. there until you've extended. Yeah. And then if you freeze frame that, we shouldn't be able to tell whether you're push pressing, jerking or whatever. It should be exactly the same in terms of the drive. Yeah. And then it's the last possible second where, where we go. Instead of going boom, we go boom yeah so just just for that first bit as you at least as you dip in just think you're going for a powerful push press and then at the last possible second you slide in and in that split jerk yeah good That was be better dip. Don't worry about don't worry about it being perfect, yeah. Very nice. Good.
That was good. Yeah? Nice. That was good. Like it just looks like straight, lot straighter line up and down. Yeah? The ones that are tough are the ones where you kind of, you dip in and then you're just going a bit too far and then you're giving yourself a hard job to stabilize. Yeah. yeah you're kind of thinking it, it's easy to think in your head, oh, well, the split doesn't feel super stable yet. Yeah. But actually it could be because you're giving yourself a hard task by not making it straight up. So, yeah, yeah? yeah. Another little thing for you yeah. is I think you might be better just go, you look like you're going to be really strong and powerful. Like if you, if you, if you do like do some bunny hops up and down, right? That's it. Jump higher. Right. We'll watch this video back. Right. That looks really, really good. Yeah. You're going really shallow and explosive with the dip. Okay. With the with the the log, it looks like you're going to the bottom of the sweet spot, yeah. and then you're going past it which is probably t like stealing a bit of power from you. Yeah. But also as well, it, it's just making it a lot more likely to, you run out of range of motion and then that, hit, that hinge comes in. So this time, just do, just do a set of, set of three bunny hops as high as you can. Right, and then let's go into, let's go into your log set and try and replicate. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Try and replicate that. So dip just to the bottom of the, where you did your bunny hop, yeah. That looked better. Forget, forget about it. Forget about it. Move on. Come on. And again. Let's do five. Want at least one good one out of the five. That's loads better. Yeah? 100%. Three more. So much better. You're driving up from an explosive position there. Feels more springy, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah? Fantastic, well done. Yeah, that felt. I wasn't going as well, was I? That's great. Yeah. I like it. Let's you, whilst you're out of breath, it's pretty light, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, whilst you're out of breath, let's, let's just pat pattern that. By going back to your push press, yeah. just do a set of just do a set of, set of three explosive push press with, with that short, sharp little dip. This is the thing to practice with your push presses. Yeah. Nice, Mal. That short, sharp little dip. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So watch your feet now. You feel like that is so much more powerful than that like kind of, it looks like you're going to the sweet spot before yeah. and then you're going into that quarter squat. I was trying to go into my heels. Yeah, I get that, mid foot, exactly, you've just, you just said it yourself, mid foot, yeah? That's where the magic happens, yeah? Not only are you more powerful and explosive, but it's a lot fucking easier to keep this, this torso upright than going, yeah? You go there, and then all your overhead stuff is fucked as soon as that torso goes, yeah? yeah? Okay. See, get one more set on this, this is gonna be magic. But this time do three push press and then three split jet. That short, shallow, explosive, violent dip. That's amazing. Yeah, now split. Second and third rep were there, were magic. Yeah, loads better. Magic, well done. So much better, yeah? yeah. Woo! So, right, the, you're on. so yeah, so you do that, do that 100, and then you were, like you say, you spending time yeah. at the bottom position, you turn it into a pause yeah, yeah, so you, yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're not using that elastic energy. Mm -hmm. So you could drill that with like, say, yeah. is there a 60? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with the 60, you know when you're doing your squat cleans? Yeah. Yeah? And they look brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what you're doing, you, you're not pausing at the bottom of your squat yeah. cleans, you're, you're, acceler you're accelerating into the hole yeah, and accelerating yeah, yeah. out. 
but your positioning's got to be perfect. But when your positioning's perfect, it feels easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you land a 70 clean, yeah, it feels yeah, effortless. Easy, yeah. But the time's got to be right. So you've got to take that exact principle yeah, into, yeah. into your stones. So actually be drilling this with like the 60 that feels like nothing on the pickup yeah. and just drilling that accelerate yeah, yeah, down yeah, into the hole yeah, and all, yeah. yeah? And then what we'll, what we'll do with maybe the, say the 70 and 80 maybe, would be envisage the, or imagine that that's like uh, 100 or 110. Uh, just imagine it's heavier than it is. And what you do with that technique is try and keep your hips high, yeah. So you rearrange your hands, and then you can still accelerate into the hole when you need to ride. Right. Okay, yeah. yeah? So get your hand position before I've dropped all yeah, the way down. Yeah, or you could even you could even do it where you lap and go down to the bottom position, yeah. rearrange your hands. Hands high is going to be better for me, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we'll see that as we go along because yeah. it, de it depends. I don't want to say yet until it's in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> but the but heavy heavy stuff. Say you're going one third or two hundred. It and you're like here, yeah, and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. like actually getting your hands in the right position, coming up, yeah, and then going it. back down. And yeah. So, yeah. so you're yeah. almost keeping yeah. halfway up. So then, yeah, 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 exactly. So you can use that elastic energy. So practice yeah. that. But it's the kind because it's skillful. It's like you wouldn't go straight in at a 75 squat, point, would you? No. You'd be building up, yeah, yeah, making yeah, your time yeah. try. Yeah, so yeah, same yeah. principle with yeah. the. Yeah. That's what you can do with the lighter stones, rather than just thinking, oh, 60, yeah, feel like an animal, feel like an animal, get me there, get me the heavy ones. Like actually just drilling these scenarios, so then when you need to switch between techniques, it'd be beneficial. Yeah. And I think the other thing for you as well, with the, using the, like actually just thinking about the, the bicep thing that we're on the foot. Exactly the same principle, so where you're of the tendency, and it makes sense because you've got really strong arms, yeah? But like actually just 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 drill in your head right, yeah. tense up tricep. Yeah. Learn how to just what you can't help it. I just no. automatically squeeze and I shouldn't. So this, so this is what what, yeah. what you need to practice. And yeah. and I think yeah. a way that would be beneficial yeah. for you to get away from this bicep thing yeah. instead of do you warm up tackulus and then yeah, put yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. I just put your tacky on straight away. Yeah. Well I, I get it. Yeah, but I mean yeah, yeah. We, we want to preserve yeah. your back, biceps yeah, yeah. and that, and that, learning how to trust your tacky better yeah. is a brilliant way of sparing your biceps for somebody who's, yeah. who's uh, using them more than they should. Yeah. Because if you're doing tacky, like even, say if I'm going up to, say I went up to 160 on the stove, I do, even 80 tackiness feels hard. Like it feels like I'm having to squeeze it, yeah. you know, or 90 or 100. I'm having to really squeeze that tackiness. But it's not what I'm doing when I go up. When I go up to like 140, 150, my arms are actually just relaxed. They're just clamped. And just and the tacky, yeah, the, there's no tension there because there's no point in creating tension if the tacky's right. So all this tension that you're creating with your upper body to squeeze, like I'm not a fan of that, yeah. like if we can use tacky and stone, because actually save that squeeze for when you need it for that drive up. Yeah. Yeah? So, so, but the only way that you can do that is drilling it with the lighter weights. So actually with the 50 kilo stone that you don't need tacky for, just on your tacky arm and just learn how to, oh my God, my arms are just relaxed and the stones are stuck to me. Learning that and then learning how to not not rely on that squeeze so much, yeah? Now, but yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm going to try and come the next one as well. Alright. Alright. Yeah, is it? Can this go still, back? Still running, yeah. Can this go back on? No, no. Um, so Mo Molly, Shannon asked the other day about what to, what to wear, and obviously the, like, my, for, for guys, like, I just got, like going topless. But obviously for girls, I didn't know what the answer was to what do you find best kit to wear for stones and like your setup. Obviously take like for, obviously for training and competition. Like what's most practical that doesn't take ages to. So in like when it's warm in summer, I'll go short, like short shorts. So then you just get the tacky, when you lap it, you just get tacky on your legs and then it's easy to clean off. Otherwise you ruin your 
leggings. But then in winter, I've been wearing like old tacky leggings over my leggings and over my knee sleeves so they don't yeah. get tacky in your knee sleeves. Um, and then top, just a normal t-shirt and then my soft belt and then a, like just an old t-shirt over, but maybe a bit tighter. Yeah. Does that one get a bit? This is loose, yeah, it does get a bit in the way. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got your belt on underneath? I've not got a belt on. I've got a belt on. If you, like, if you find it helpful, um, un yeah, underneath, and then it doesn't get, like, doesn't get come undone with the stone. And then what about, what about tacky generally for you? Like, for, for Shannon, obviously she's strong, strong as hell, but she's new to stones. So like, what have you, because obviously you've gone through the thing, you've done tackyless, you've worn worn stone sleeves, you've worn tape, you go bare arm, like what, what, what do you find now? What would mm. you, if you were starting again, like how would you attack, attack stone training? I go bare arms these days. We were just saying about it, like, I think you can, you kind of build up, I don't know if your skin gets thicker or something, but you can, like a few weeks and it's horrible. Like I've got marks from doing like 50 yesterday and it, it does feel painful, but I know in a few weeks it, it, you kind of, I don't know if you yeah. get used to it or it gets. It's, it's like um, front rashes, isn't it? When yeah. You're not you're not, like front squats or yeah. And then it hurts. Surrender. After a couple of weeks, you don't feel it. Like and like yolk. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, your skin will, your skin will Yeah. Bit. The reason, I've, like, I've got some stone sleeves and I do find them move a bit and also just takes longer, like trying to put them on and you've got tack in your hands and then tack in the Velcro and it's just a pain in the ass. I yeah. think it's, e it's just easier and it, the tacky comes off your skin. Fairly yeah. easily, so yeah, it's the same every time. Like, yeah, that might move. Yeah, exactly. And then the tacky itself is really weather dependent, which is annoying. Um, at the minute, that spider, that spider tacky, um, the comp grade ones, quite. However, it's gone. And what do you find best and quickest way to get your tacky off? WD forty, and then like a. Um, like an old, like a duster type thing, or like an old t-shirt. I think a towel gets a bit, it soaks it in too much, whereas a dust, like an old t-shirt. Yeah, um, yeah, that's quite good in this weather, but then it, if when it's boiling hot, it'll be di different again, because it kind of melts more. But that's quite, that's all right at the minute. That's like the comp grade spider attack. And where would you put, where would you put that and how much? Um, if I was doing moderate, just on my hands, if I was going really heavy, I'd maybe put some on my hands. As well as the hands? Yeah. Yeah. And then what about if you were doing a, what about with a run? Use them if you want. If you, were, if you were doing a run and you were thinking, oh, the first few stones, are, what if they, you know, like to have a spare, some people use the side of yeah. the yeah. leg, some people the hands. Would you? There's like five stones, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, we were just saying it, like, at the comp, probably all the stones are going to be, like, covered in tacky. Um, like, for yourself, obviously, you're the first weight class out, so they might not be as... But there's going to be people in front of you, and people go silly with tacky at comps, don't they? Like, they'll be... So they'll probably have, like, a lot of them. Already on them, but and what I'll the, probably do... And what's the risk with that? Like, how does that feel? Well, with the lighter stones, it, you can almost pull it if it's too tacky you can almost like if it's hot you can almost yeah. pull it back down can't you if it's if you're too stuck to it um so so just to add to that like that's why it's an, another benefit of you know the technique that we used the other day where we're exploding and then popping and letting go because you can kind of offset the risk of if there is a bit too much tacky of it and it's sticking to you if you explode and push when it's weightless doesn't really matter because you'll push against it but you'll see you know if you're using the technique where you're like placing it onto the platform and it's still stuck to you they you're just wasting a lot of energy getting away so really good to reinforce that um, and then for, like for the run probably for me i'll try and do like the first two or three with minimal added tacky so just the tacky that's already on the stones um and then for the ones that i'll find heavier like the last one or two, I'll probably have some on the back of my hand. So if they're not super tackied, um, I've got some there to to add. So like having a bit on the back of your hand that's not going to get taken off by the other stones, and then you can just add it 
and I think it's good like I found it helpful practicing that just in case because you kind of got to do it quick because obviously it's against mm. the clock um, yeah. yeah exactly so almost do, doing it as like a complex where you could do like say one load one round the back of your hand for the second boom mm. yeah or, the, or there's a way that, that uh, Rhiannon does where she's set on the, on the side yeah so she's loaded it there and then she just go boom and up um, yeah, it's a good idea. I might try that actually on legs when it gets yeah. a bit warmer. <laughs> I would have thought so. Yeah, and it's inside, isn't it? So yeah, it's going to be yeah warm enough. Isn't and then it? what about supportive kit like knee sleeves and stuff? Do you find that? Yeah, I've got that? my knee sleeves on under my yeah. tacky leggings and my belt on under my t-shirt. But I find a like a stiffer belt, like an SBD belt, not helpful. But a, like a soft belt help so you've got yeah yeah like a bit of brace but not getting in the way yeah yeah and then let's just show where you, where you put your tacky for you so is that going to be set one like you kind of yeah, but I've not put my shoes on. No, it's all right. You don't. You don't have to do it. But I mean, is that is that? I'm going to need to put my shoes on. Oh right. <laughs> she made a mistake. But I mean, look how much she's put on. That might surprise some people in terms of you see people like literally using like a third of a tub on the on each one, and you're just looking for that, just that little bit, just enough. Per, you know what we're saying before about having the once you've got on the the grip on the sandbag. You just need enough, yeah? Same, same with the tacky, you just need enough. Whereas a lot of people think that more is better. Whereas actually, you just need enough to get that purchase. And yeah, like that, that looks good. I put my shoes on. Yeah, you, what, do you want me to put them on? <laughs> nice one. Actually, maybe my other one. Good. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> So that, that's, a, that's a really good thing to practice, to be honest, is um, because it is a skill in itself. When you're doing over yoke, yeah. you just have to launch it over the yoke, yeah? yeah? Whereas easy. when you're doing a stone run, yeah. this should is a thing that you need to practice yeah. massively. I've, no doubt about is actually there's a skill in getting the stone settling yeah. really quickly. Yeah. Um, because you'll see people who are like, feel like, oh yeah, I'm, a, I'm an animal, the weight's so light. They'll go like that, they'll launch it, and then it's bouncing around, and then they have to wait for it to settle. And you've just slid it on and then moved on to the next one and you're going faster. So a good, good way to cue this is actually the, the feedback, the noise that you're getting from there. Mm -hmm. We want to make the loads as quiet as possible. Right. And that's a good way to do it is just think, right, well, how can I make this quieter? Yeah. Yeah. But was my extension of... Yeah, yeah, great, great. Yeah, exactly, and and this is the this is the this is what really really valuable thing to learn when you when you're doing a tiered run is what I'm saying to saying to Shannon, especially because I think it is reasonably like the the comp weights, yeah. yeah I mean, so it is going to be down to split times. So the the, the it's going to be like say for instance, be it takes you seconds twenty six seconds. Between. Might take someone else twenty eight. Might say twenty five. Like no one will fail the stone run. Yeah. likely. So if you can save sp split seconds or seconds here and there, like Shannon's there, yeah. the load looked easy, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. She looked so strong for the weight, but it's going boom, boom, boom. It's taking her two seconds to get it settled before she's moved on to the next right. one. Yeah. But she's like puzzled because the other day she was nailing ones that were higher. Yeah, on there. But the point is, is the skill of getting one settled to that height, that height, and that height is subtly different, yeah? Because you, you were doing the high ones the other day, you focused on this big extension to make that brilliant and that probably brilliant. But it's weird because with this one, you don't, you don't need I to don't come need as to high. Exact, so exactly. Yeah. So it's actually scale, it yeah. Almost like the, the only way that I can, that I can f think about it is, 
like a log clean, for instance, right? Say, for instance, you're doing like a barbell clean or an axle, you can just send it and it's just explosive, or a deadlift, just go 100%. Whereas with a log clean, you have to scale it for the weight, how much effort you put in, yeah? 30 kilo log clean is gonna be different to a 60 kilo log clean, yeah? Because you, you put the 60 kilo effort into the 30, it's gonna fucking take your head off, yeah. yeah? So you have to like scale it, and that's what you're having to learn with this to the, di to the different heights. And again, it's just another skillful thing that, so it, I'm not a fan of him so low, to be honest, because he, I don't know. But, but yeah, that, it's definitely a valuable thing to practice. Um, so that, do, makes, that makes sense to me now because I was giving it four beams extension yeah. on the 60 kilo log platform and it's yeah. like smashing down but I think it's because I'm just doing practicing my extensions on last week yeah, yeah. it wasn't right let's, go, let's, go, let's, go, let's go again do exactly the same but just take a little bit out of it and the, the thing that I'm saying to Shannon like if you can give yourself these like external cues to think of rather than just be like oh yeah is it alright like I've just said to her just think silence or quiet be quiet. That's the feedback that we're going for. And that one was, we all heard it, it's crashing. Mm. Yeah. But when you, when you look, back, like, look at people on social media or whatever, doing stone runs or YouTube or whatever, and just look, look through a different lens. And say, that's good, that's better. But it's going to get even better if she learns to release it and it be quiet. Yeah. When you're going to height yeah. and you like pop it and put your hands underneath yeah. and like push it onto the platform. Um, if you obviously do that to a high platform, if you're going fairly maximal to a lower platform, yeah. would you just do what Shannon just did and like just deliver it there and not move your hands? Is that how you teach the difference between heavy and light to high and low? I'm not sure because I think I think I'd uh, I think I'd do exactly the same in terms of rearranging my hands. Um, but I just know the height difference in terms of... Uh, in fact, the, I think this will be a good one to demo, actually. Should I change it? Like, if I'm going I'll demo it with fairly it, light to height, I'll do that, but... people stone runs after this you might uh, just look at it a little bit differently and look at the value you may not appreciate of the value in getting it to settle quickly yeah so look at the crashing like how long it takes to get to the next one and the sound quiet, go to this one, I do the same thing, and they're going to be crashing again. Yeah, because I'm just going to be going there, boom, boom, boom. So I need to learn where, where to drive, the, you know, the chest pass we talked about? I need to know when to do that yeah. for the different heights, yeah? So I'll try and do a, I'll try and do a run and see if I can make them as quiet as possible. I think this is almost a proprioception thing though of knowing the heights on your body so like I know that like 52 inches is like nipple height 
So then I know that if I need to get a stone to 52 inches, it's got to go over my chest to get it to that point. So it's measuring on yourself and going, right, if, if that's where it is, that's where it is, that's where it is, then you can yeah. practice that extension on that. 100%. So we put to train proprioception, what do you what do you have to do? So proprioception means you feel and knowing what, what it actually feels like and getting that it's obvious. You need to fucking practice. Yeah. That is it, you need to feel it. It's not just a case of I'm gonna get my stone over yoke to hundred for two or well, hundred for three and then your stone run's gonna be easy on the day. It's completely different. Yeah. Different skill. So a way that I like to train this and like to put in your program is like giving her like a strength progression so she builds it up like realistically. M Molly's final stone is your PB currently, isn't it? Even though you are stronger. But you do, it's a hundred, isn't it, that you finish on? Which she's done a hundred, she can do a hundred. So we're doing like a strength progression in her program so she builds confidence getting stronger with for the weight so she's trying to do it. But then there's like a skill progression. I think I did with probably something like say eight sets of two, stone run, sub eight seconds, something like that, where she can go as heavy as she as heavy as she wants as long as it's below eight seconds to do stone. <coughs> so she probably have to start off really light with it and then go as heavy as she wants. So I, so without thinking about it, I don't need to cue her to, oh, be silent, be alone, be quiet. She's gonna learn that by the constraint. If she's hitting that time, she's gonna be doing that automatically, yeah? And then progress that the following week to she's getting a strength progression on the stone, on whatever the weight is or whatever, in terms of so she's getting stronger and more confident. But then a stone run, we might progress to Instead of doubles sub eight seconds, we'll go triples sub 12 seconds. Yeah? yeah? So she's keeping the same speed constraint, but she's building up the consistency of adding more weights in. Then the following week, four stone sub 16. Following week, five it? stone sub 20. Yeah. yeah? And I know she's hitting those targets. Of course it was. Ideally, she's hitting reasonable weights within those targets. I don't need to cue her to, I don't need to sit like, oh, is, is it stuck to the t-shirt and if she's set like, yeah. I know she's ironed out all that shit herself yeah. to hit to hit those targets, yeah? yeah? Or if she's getting stuck and she's like, oh, oh I, what's happening? I'm not sure. Like any kind of problems within there will be flagged up and then, then we can cue her within that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's where, where you can use train it. Giving yourself these objective measures are really, really, really helpful. But yeah, I think you, need, you see the value of asking the different parts. Yeah. Um, what should we do then? I'll do the night by putting them on my brain. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not getting out of power. Yeah, great point. Easy. Easy that. And that, that's why I'm why I think Ant stops the stones though, don't they? I'm sure at England last say, year they were stopping them. Because you could have just like, you could do an event stay that was, say, your Friday, yeah, you just I'm go sure heavy or whatever. Them. You could do the Tuesday yeah. session where you just come in and do, say, mm. sandbag, carry, high pickup, chilled, working on hand position. Yeah, if it's going to roll back you off. Do, yeah. yeah. Say, stone run, triple, sub 12 There's seconds, like a little light, a hole in the say, middle of it, isn't there? 50, 60, 70 or something. Yeah. Just so learning the, the height where you yeah. just chilled. Could be doing like, say, what's your comp weight on log? 65 log. So you could be doing, say, sets of, sets of five, learning how to use your, your 60 seconds, one rep every 12 seconds for, you know, sets of 50 or something, 50 kilos or something. Just learning how to pace yourself to peak the if skill you, for If you feel all right, I'd do the uncomp, but yeah, yeah, you you're not getting hyped for. Yeah. Yeah. And then what, what's yeah. the other thing? Deadlift, you could be doing yeah. your 12 doubles at 110 yeah. uh, in the suit. And what's the other event? <laughs> no, um, the, the frame speed work. <laughs> so basically, I'm saying you've got like an event session there. 
that's going to be a piece of piss. <laughs> and it's just like... To be fair, this is what Adam You're going to well. feel great I don't even question it now. Do you know what I mean? Just like, three minutes and bad one. <laughs> yeah, and all, all these, like, get these little intricate ah, no, little things. Like, oh, where do I put my, oh, where should I put my feet? It's ironed out, and then you go to your, your, your session where you were going heavy, and you can just fucking enjoy it. And you, and you know, like, when you, you're, like, almost... Contr- Who's controlling your nervous system in a different way, yeah, aren't you? I think I'd so die. you're like, right, I'll get hyped this session. I'm not thinking about any fucking cues. I'm just just going to send it. Yeah. I just film it on mine and send it to you, yeah. What? Exactly the same. Have Straight it. up. <laughs> yeah. thug, li- thug life. Easy. I told you. <laughs> get get the 110 out, let's go! Yeah, send it. I'm actually second ever at Stone Run. Stone session. It's insane. Yeah, I've never done 60s. Becca, can you... So I got your mic to... I was going, wanted to ask you about the... Uh, oh, no. Like... Egg, you, loading stones to height, like a lot of people really struggle with it. And, like, I think you, you are brilliant. I have my coaching way of teaching people how to do it yeah but you just like s- simplify what's the sim- simplest way you could you know like load into 80 for you to 60 inches like how do you do it so well what do you think of i don't know i think i've tried to like break it all down so that i can get like the, m- the most of the height out of my actual height so like yeah when i watch you the only thing that i would change with emma's is when she picks up the stone your feet are really wide so you're losing what and maybe an inch of height. Yeah. So if when you can pick that stone up and you can get it onto your lap, you can bring your foot in, yeah. you're going to immediately get another yeah. two inch, two inches of height straight away. And as well, I think loads of people are scared of the stone, like, in the face. Get yeah. your face on stones. Like, if, yeah. get your chin on, like, them stones. The way that Molly did it with me was training to, I think it was to 60 inches, with 60 kilos, just reps, reps yeah. and reps and reps. And I was like smashing my chin off them every single day to the point <laughs> where it just stopped hurting and you just got used to it. Yeah. And you worked out a way to get your face out of the way and just yeah. launching them. Brilliant. But so the, the simplest thing that she just said about is bringing, that, bringing, that, bringing the feet in. You see people taking the wide stance pick up and, keeping the, and driving up with the feet wide. So that's a simple little thing, bringing your foot in or giving it extra height. But the, the other thing that she's saying about, it, it, I liked what she's saying about, like, take your face off or send it to your face. And basically you said about maximising your height, which a lot of people don't do. What a lot of people try and load to height is they'll load to about here and then essentially bottle it or not be confident and then try and kind of load it from here to here. Whereas you watch Be- uh, Becca load it and she's sending it until the stone literally cannot go any further, it's like up here and then she'll, she'll load it on. I think as well one of my other biggest tips I got from you and Shane was not letting go of the stone too early. So that's yeah. one massive thing that I took away from and I've done it before where I've got 120 and I can h- hear it hitting the bar and you lose it. And if you just hold on to that where you, you think I might have it here, you hold it on for that last like second and suddenly you've got like another yeah. inch, inch and a half and you can just get it straight over and it's easy then. But yeah, holding on to the stone because a lot of people try and let go of them fast. Mm. Almost that people can take that explosiveness yeah. too far and they lose height by trying to be explosive exactly. too early. And you think about it, when you've got the stone here, right, if you just go like a split second too early and you try and push it out, imagine how heavy that stone feels down yeah. there versus that extra inch where you've managed yeah. to get it to here and you've got your hands on it. It feels so much lighter, early, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, 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 100%. Brilliant. And then the best way of doing that, like she's saying, is doing loads and lo- I say it until I'm booing the face, but just pr- practice is the most underrated thing in, in strongman as a sport. But yeah, Molly's just got her drilling it with 60 kilos and she's absolutely brilliant with it. So. Just like Shannon's saying, she's getting this. Tie it around like the circumference. Not the centre, but like a little bit higher than the centre. Yeah. But otherwise, I'm like going right over. So then it's ending up like on my chest. Yeah. So yeah. A little bit lower. I don't feel it on my chest. I feel it like squeezed into my 
like belly and hips almost. I and then like that'll be stronger as well. Yeah, because that's where your power's coming yeah. from, isn't it, in your extension. And, it, and if you couple that with what Becca's saying about <coughs> just basically sending it the full length of your body, yeah. like if you take that principle and you get the stone to the highest point, it doesn't matter where you start. What's actually more important is that you start in a strong position yeah. and keep it rolling up there, which a lot of people think the logic is that where they start with the stone higher on the body so they don't have to lift it as high, but it's actually making the lift a lot more. I think that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Because where I've got, I don't feel the hip from, I don't feel it travel from the hip there. I feel like it's from the hip, but when I'm from there, it's already there. Yeah. Yeah. So which, and I'm not getting any kind of... Because you're not, power. you're having to hold it there with your arms, yeah. so you're not, yeah, you've not got a power transfer. That's what, I think that's what's going on. I think squeezing it into like between, somewhere between your belly button and your hip crease rather than squeezing it into your sternum. Yeah, it shouldn't be like if you feel any sternum pain, in my opinion. Well, that's it, where it is, like the. Yeah. But it's just too high. It should just be visiting there like momentarily. It shouldn't be squeezing into there, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Hey. Hi. How's it going, Kate? Okay, All right, Ned. How are we doing? Yeah, yeah. Are you good? Good birthday. It yeah, 60, well, 70, 90. I, I lie, actually. I spent the whole time marking. Is that what you want? Mm. I've recently had a cut. I've got a lot much taken out. Okay, yeah. Mm. And we'll roll them in. He's there. He's there. To height or need the extension, you, you, the more internally rotated your shoulder is, Slapsy. the harder it is to... Yeah. You, you're getting a bit of restriction I'm in terms of flexion. Like, I, just, mm. I feel like it's just... Yeah, yeah nice. Like that. I'm going over and it's already there. Mm. No. Oh. Lovely. Well, I'm just picking it up. It's not money doing something. Yeah, really good. Get it on it. Get it on its flat edge, so it's. Uh, yeah, and then you. Massive brace. You've got it. Absolute class that night. Come on. Come on yes, Heather, get, there, get it on. So close, like an inch more of your knit, you'll get that. Do it for a single in a minute. I might do. it was easy to build that skittle to the thing, but sometimes it's a bit slower, isn't it? Sometimes I would normally it's. normally one motion up to like anything, like up to 80. Yeah. Lovely. Lap and load it. Uh, yeah, I can do it again. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. It is a different, I think it's a different ball game at the end of a run, isn't it, as well? We do have all them stones, though, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Have you got something high to load to? Yeah, but we've got, like, giant slides. <laughs> yeah, this is class to see. Like, she, Becca's joking, kind of, but she's not joking. <laughs> she's not joking. Like, she wants to fucking win England and... He's got this sa savage, he's, he's just cut, started doing it and she's helping her out, it's class. Come on Emma, Big pick. stick with me. Come on, you got that, get it in the You've got it. Get right in the middle, feet and hands right in the middle of that stone. Come on, come yeah, on. roll it, come roll on. it in. Yeah, you've got it. Right, have a, have a little rest. So you've, wait, you, you've wasted your energy. Just, you know when it spins? Yeah. Like, if it, if it ever spins, like, don't try and fight it. Okay. If it's spinning, that's your feedback that your hands are just in the wrong position. Right. Mm -hmm. So you move your hands into a different position and then it spun the other way. Yeah. So again, don't fight it. Okay. Just rest. And then, uh, and then you found the good position, but you'd waste a bit of it. A bit too much energy for Max Stone. Yeah. In fighting the spinning, so just yeah. rest a minute or two. Have a minute now. Get your get your hands in the right position. You'll get that. Yeah. Definitely. Get, get some more tacky on your hands, and get a bit of tacky if you can up front of your. On your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Get that um, that better one. Where is it? It gets on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Sticky one. What have we got here? I suppose what I'm saying, Shannon, is hopefully you've learnt some things that. today <laughs> that you don't actually need to be strong or fit or use a lot of energy to actually develop, you know what I mean? You know, like, learn... I prefer, I prefer doing everything lighter I, to learn every... Like, you can't learn when it's heavy, you just can't. Yeah. And, I, and that's what I 
I need a moment of scaring people. Yeah. So. Nice, my way. So you can see, uh, just have a look where Mo's dry, like look at the load up. And you can see how the stone never wants to, once she's driving up. Yeah. Like it never wants to slip down because it's, she's stabilizing in the lowest position. Yeah, yeah. Like there's no, there's no way that stone's gonna slide anyway. Yeah. But if you try and hold it high, you see it so often, people get to the heavier stones, they'll go up, and then it'll start to, it'll start to slip a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Whereas that's the, that's the advantage of, of starting in the lowest position, is it's got nowhere to slip to. So it can only go up. So where's the best place to hold, would you say? Around the center? Yeah, I, yeah, I would say around the around the around the equator of the stone. Yeah, because really. when, when I watched you do that, I saw yeah. still there, and that's what I noticed with you, your hand position. Yeah. Uh, for the lower platform, especially, it's quite low, so then you yeah. can just get a little bit hips. Because I feel like I just couldn't control the extension yeah. I was getting because it was already at the top of my yeah. chest. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I find that the arms over. <laughs> is a really, I, th I, th I almost think it's used a lot in strongman because you get so many guys and girls, well, most of the guys that are complaining about the biceps. Yeah, it all, uh, that's my, my interpretation of it, is like, if you go here, your biceps are less, less at risk. Are you with me? But for me and you, who understand, you know, like say the weightlifting approach to stones, well, the biceps aren't fucking doing anything. They're just keeping us attached to here. Yeah, if I'm grinding out a stone here, exactly. All, all my arms are doing is keeping that stone close to me, so my legs can transfer into it. Whereas you see guys that are struggling with it, and they'll go, exactly, exactly, exactly. That that's the thing. Whereas with you, like. If you get if you if you drop the elbows a little bit and you go to squeeze up and you're feeling like oh, fucking uh, my biceps are a bit you know say you tomorrow you're like oh my biceps are a bit sore <laughs> then just just nudge it up a little bit yeah yeah but like I was saying before like if we can you can squeeze in there not only will you feel stronger think of the, what I did demo before on the sandbag where I said instead of bicepping it in just think of like seated row yeah and almost do, doing that big bear hug squeeze. Almost like, be, like bear hug it into where your tummy is. And I think it's gonna feel better than... What, what do you wanna try next, 70? Yeah. I think it, it's heavy enough to feel whether it's better. Come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 Do you see it spin a little bit there? And that, and that, well, it was it was just hard to explain now. But like as she drove up, it was spinning down, just because it was she's trying to hold it that little bit too high with her arms over. And I think if she'd have just embraced it being low and then driven into it. Yeah. We have a go with the yeah. who's next? Sixty. Just watch Shannon do this, and then we'll rip the thing to the computer. That looked easier, Shannon. <laughs> 